Hi there and welcome. I'm Robin Marie and this is the member spotlight series for Makers Tech U and I have a very special guest today. Her name is Francisca Nunes and she's from Portugal. She's a mixed media artist and one of the things I love about her work is that she incorporates nature in a, an amazing way into her work. So I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit about herself. So welcome Francisca. How are Hi, you? Hi, hello. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for having me Robin. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you. Oh, yes, it's good to have you. I'm so excited. I've I've known, I'm trying to remember how we actually met. And I'm was it was it through Christy? I'm trying to remember um, if it was through Probably I I met you in Less Documented Project. Oh, okay. 2014, I think. That's when we started. 2014. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And uh, and since then, uh, I was following your work, and we reached more closer. The the when you start launching Maker Stacky. Right, right. I was trying to remember how we actually met because I remember we jumped on a call and we talked about what your goals were and what you were looking yes. to do. And I didn't realize, I guess, at the time that it was from the Documented Life Project. It was. I got become acquainted with many other creatives through the Documented Life Project. Yes. So, and that was in 2001 so, yes. that we started that. So, yeah. So tell me a little bit about how you describe your work. And you're in Portugal. So tell us a little bit about that too, because I'm, I'm very curious. Yes, I'm in Portugal. Uh, I live in the center of Portugal, Coimbra. And yeah, my heart, my art is a really natural, raw. I feel it's very intuitive. Um, I love to fuse, as you said, nature and the nature elements because I live, I love nature and botanicals themes. Um, I am a biology teacher, so, and botanics was always my main subject mm -hmm. in school. So, um, and the, what I love most is like, I love to mix nature elements and the, the different substrates, like mm -hmm. fabric, papers, so they'll combine them. Mm -hmm. I leave, uh, my art is very explorative, I think, explorative mm -hmm. and intuitive. I, sure. I think. And you describe it as you're, you're pulling the, uh, the, the nature, the current into like the aged and the old. What do you mean by that when you say the aged and old kind of bringing together with nature? Because I always uh, pay attention, for instance, in my garden, that a flower is really beautiful when it's blooming, but then everything goes and fall apart. And I always loved aged paper, old vintage books and mm -hmm. everything very aged. And so I discovered with mixed media that we could blend everything together. And that was um, a very in important find to me because I always love those things, old things. Faded, tatered, and uh, yeah. and with with mixed media, I could um, bring them together mm -hmm. in my art. So, like in a, when I'm in a garden, everything has a cycle. So I have to sow. I I wait to my flowers bloom, and then at this time, I'm going to see them fall apart and mm. be at the, at the, the soil again. So uh, I think with mixed media and my art, I go with this cycle too. Okay. Do you find that during seasonal times, obviously there's things that grow, I assume in Portugal, much like in America, where certain things grow only at certain times of the year. So do you yes. have favorites that you, that affect how you create based on the seasons and what's growing in your garden? I've been exploring that too. It, um, it was no, it was not obvious at the beginning when I start making art, mm -hmm. but with my evolution, I start uh, thinking my art like that, the seasonal, because I, I see that in spring and summer, I get everything much more light and colorful. Right. And then suddenly when I come more fall and winter, I start to select muted tones and more uh, similar to those colors that I see around me and those seasonal times, I, I thought, yes. And with um, echo dyed and echo printed papers, all the colors get more muted and more similar to those tones. I really appreciate and love that. Right. Do you grow some things specific for doing the eco papers? Because I know in my exploration, not everything works. Like not every botanical or leaf or bud or flower will actually translate well. What are some things that you really love to use when you're creating? 
Yeah. Uh, not everything works, but as uh, with other tools in mm -hmm. art, I really love to explore. Yeah. And um, if I don't have the all of the flowers or the, 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 the leaves that are best to print, I use what I have and I try and explore what I, ha with what I have. Okay. But during these last years, couple of years, I'm trying to put on my garden some of plants that I really know that are going to be different and one that I just love because it's amazing to print. Uh, it's marigolds. Oh. Marigolds is, is amazing a flower to print, to eat, to sell it, <laughs> to bring okay. color. Yes. So now, it's an amazing. Um, blue and orange. Those are the, like the yellowy and orange ones, right? They're kind yes. Of, they're yeah. pretty easy to grow, right? I think my mom had those when I was growing up in her. They are, they are very easy to grow. They grow in, I think I saw in so many different weathers and countries. Okay. So I think they old widespread flower and there are yellows and oranges and different formats and shapes okay and it's a and it's a great helper to the garden <laughs> as well I, don't they um repel bugs or yes anything? they have a smell okay uh, one artist friend told me some time ago that she she can't for example to echo die with the uh, marigolds because it smells so so f strong that oh, you wow. don't don't like it oh. but uh, i love marigolds and calendulish and but most of the the time i select flowers because i love them and then i use them right what about herbs are there herbs that you especially like to use that you grow as well because i mean you can use those in your cooking because you love to cook as well so yes, i love to cook and i grow the the herbs more to cook and then I might be exploring them in echo print. Okay. I love coriander. Um, I love parsley, and I have thyme. It's like in English, it's thyme. 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 Okay, thyme. Oh, yeah. Celery. Oh. I have lots of herbs. Lavender, levisticum. I don't don't know if you say that levisticum. Uh I'm Lef not sure. I know lavender sounded like what you said before, but I'm not sure of the second Lef one. Uh, it's like a, a scientific name. Okay. It's an herb. It's, okay. uh, it's a very oh. fragrant uh, herb. And yeah, I love oh, it. How nice to be able to not only use those in your cooking, which you also have said is a creative process for you. So I'd like yes, to know more is. about that, but also the, it, it, the, the art itself, the creating kind of touches on a, um, a place for us, just like smell, like we're visually seeing and touching and playing with our art, but then you're also having the element of the fragrance added in, which must be amazing. I can't yeah. even fathom that. And I was thinking this too, when you were talking about, we were talking about the seasons and things, do you keep um, dried flowers and things um, in your studio so that you can pull from them? Or is it only when you've grown them and they've expired or what do you keep? Oh, no, I love them dry. Okay. Very old with the uh -huh. muted tones uh -huh. after they dry. And I love, especially when they are not, I love them, uh, I love them press it, but I, I dry so many of them just like mm -hmm. when I pick them from the, the, the garden and then I lay let them dry just like that. And they get so weird shapes and the petals get so weird, uh -huh. but I love that. And the tones get really like pastels, very muted. Right. And it's very, very, it's so inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another, it's another season of inspiration. Right. You get inspired in spring with lots, with lots of blooms, mm -hmm. and then you get again inspired later in, right. in fall, not to, only with the leaves that to fall apart, but with the flowers. I really love the, mm -hmm. the, that colors that bring, that they right. bring. Now, do you have do you have a garden? I, I know that in I this is funny because I have a friend in, in England, they call their whole yard a garden. But in America, when you say garden, it's a specific place that you are growing things in, like your tomatoes or your vegetables or your flowers. And you have, do you have that very specific that you you work on every year and yes. Season? Mm -hmm. I live in an apartment, so I don't have the land. But here near my home, I have um, a huge 
uh, land. It's not mine. Okay. But then I wanted so much a garden uh-huh. that uh, we asked to do our neighbor if I would, if I could make there um, a garden for my vegetables. Right. Because this is a very rural, rural place where I live. And he said, yes, of course, you can, you can plant all over the, the land. You know, no, no, I just want a little bit. So we started, we created some raised beds. Okay. And um, I create their vegetables and flowers. Wonderful. Yes. And I, and I have a, a neighbor, mm-hmm. my neighbor. Um, she was so inspired because we started this, I think, in 2015, mm-hmm. the, our garden. And uh, she was looking to all the seasons and the things that we grow because we don't use and we make everything organic right. and, and very safe. And so she was so inspired that uh, since my little girls uh, mm-hmm. born, she was helping me there. And so now is we are a team in the garden. And wow. we it's like... Um, a self-sufficient garden for us, two families with food okay. from there. Almost like you have your own mini co-op going. Like, yes, who knows where that might end up growing and expanding. Now, do you do enough that you take to market or you just share within, you know, your family and her? Yes, only to share with our neighbors yeah. and with our friends or family. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> I have people that reach in the, even in the last week. Mm-hmm. I have um, an Instagram for the garden oh. and I don't post there often because I don't have time for them. But right. um, someone from Coimbra sent me a message asking me if we would sell to others. Wow, we're uh, food, you know. Oh, no, no, it's just for us. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, that's a lot of work to start going into that. Oh, even, it's if just were, a lot of work. even if you did them dried and you started, you know, kind of doing that as a process too. So, well, now you mentioned your fam- you're, you're a mom. So tell me how you fit your creative life into being a mom and a biology teacher. I want to make sure we didn't miss that because you did say a biology teacher, which when we met, I thought was so fascinating. I'm like, okay. You know, because I'm kind of that left brain and, and you being, I mean, I don't consider biology that super creative thing inside of us. So it's like, you've got a little bit of that and a little bit of the creative. So I love yeah. that. So tell me how you like manage all of that and, and your creative life, because that's a, a lot to be, you know, balancing. That's a lot. And it's not, this, it's not easy. And I, I, I can't create all the time during the old year. There are parts of the year that I can be more present at my art table from spring along the summer. I feel more free to do that. Right. And most of the times during fall and winter, we have school. So it's, it's mm-hmm. very, it's a time, um, a, right. a, an old time job, a day, entire day job. So it's very right. uh, consuming, but because I need to explore and uh um, pull up my creativity I really um, I'm creative with the kitchen I'm creative in my garden and with my little one I have to be very creative because right. she's always asking to do something she wants to draw she wants to paint she wants to, to talk about fairies and unicorns <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very funny and I really feel that uh Even in school with my students, I have to be creative, preparing lessons, because if I go there with boring lessons. So um, to continue my creativity along the year, even if I can't work in my art table, I love to photograph my flowers. I love to photograph my vegetables or places that I go. I love to have little sketch and make journals very little so I can make some scribbles or had some collages and I keep them and sometimes later when I need some inspiration or I have some times to create I go there I I flip through them and I go further Uh, because uh, let's be honest we can't go all the time every day to our our table it's not possible no I know it's not for me and I we can we, keep being yeah. creative mm-hmm. and inspired yeah. yeah I think that well you know we 
kind of the, the analogy of the well needs to be filled. You know, we have to, we, we, you know, we empty it out and then we have to fill it back and, and yes. we have to, you know, do things that will help that. So that kind of leads me into, you know, obstacles or creative blocks that you, you come up against, you know, what does that look like for you? And kind of, how do you, I mean, obviously you have a very tight schedule. You have a lot, you have a full life with much going on. So what would you see, what do you see reoccurring for you as either an obstacle or creative block that you have to overcome? And what do you do? The, the, the main obstacle is the time when I, when I go a long time without creating, yeah, because if I I'm consistent on my practice, when my art journaling practice, I feel really more free and that things go very easily. Mm-hmm. So when I, for example, during the winter, the, the more intense times during school, and then I want to create again, it's really like a block, and I feel that I'm not creating what I mm-hmm. what even. My art is very intuitive and free, but then I open my journal and I don't know what what to put. (laughs) So there are things that I really love to do that put me on the mood of the creativity, align the the two sides of my brain. Because during school, I am very a scientific girl. I'm talking about science. Right. And then when I'm going to my art table, I have to be more um right free so i i usually clean up my desk Mm -hmm. my space put it more clear i bring uh, some flowers from the garden i put Mm -hmm. them near me and i i look at flowers or some herbs that i have i love to to put some sound a really a relaxing music Right. Uh, an incense stick I really love. Mm-hmm. And then I bring some of my journals. Sometimes I just um, flip through them or some of my eco printed papers because I get so inspired from them. Right. I always see think different things mm-hmm. on the shades they have. Right. And so then I allow me to just make some collage and start some scribblings. And we're going. Yes. We're going. <laughs> we can go. We are, I yeah. keep going. Yes. Right. And so and I feel so when you feel like you almost, I mean, and I know I go through these phases all the time where it's, you feel like ugh, it's just gone. Like I don't have it anymore. Am I going to get it back? And then you get so excited when you are in that, it's like that roller coaster. It's like you get yes. really excited when you're up on the top and you're like, this feels great. I'm creating, I feel awesome. And then you're Woo, okay. Yeah. And like I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted. I don't have the brain power to do this right now. So yeah, we yeah, all I feel that, that in the winter, during winter, yeah. when it, there is not so much sun, mm-hmm. um, we are very mu- much more time at home because uh, right. it's cold and raining. Yeah. I go to school, home, school, home, school, home. Right. And uh, with yeah. all the work, I can't play as much as I can. And I feel that. that yeah, that makes sense. Is- So I was going to ask you this, you kind of answered it. What are the winters like in Portugal? Like in my brain, I'm thinking sunshine all the time. Cause in Florida, it, we always have sunshine. It's always, you know, it's always like spring and summer here. Cause we don't get really a fall and winter, but it's like, I guess in my mind, I thought Portugal would be like Florida, but it's not right. No, it's not. No, we have uh, lots of sun. Yes. During spring and we in summer. Right. And we do have um, very sunny days in winter too, Mm -hmm. but we have lots of rain and lots of dark time, dark times because um, now when, uh, now when we start uh, October, Mm -hmm. our time is going to change for the winter time. And so it seems like we open, (laughs) wake up at night and we, for 4 p.m., it's like night again. And yeah, the the day is a little, it's too short. So I think it's too much, too much dark, even if we have some sunny days. Yeah, that makes sense. It does, you know, and I mean, fortunately, I live in Florida where yes, it gets dark early, just like everywhere else, but it's not cold. You know, we don't have that to deal with. And the yeah. sun is really shining pretty much even on most days. So it's a little bit different. You know, I don't, I don't go through a season like most do where uh, there's have lots of cold and sometimes snow. 
Oh, really? I would have never thought that. Wow. No. Oh my Here God. in Coimbra, not too much. Yeah. Okay. It's right. very rare, but yeah. we have parts in Portugal that snows in the north and in Serra da Estrela. I wouldn't have thought uh, that. So that's pretty cool. Getting a little educated on Portugal. So, well, so let's, let's transition a little bit. I want to hear, I know our audience would want to hear how your art has changed because I know you were doing mandalas before and sun catchers or what are those called? Yes. Dream catchers. Dream catchers. Yeah. So tell us kind of how your art has changed over the years. It's, it changed so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I started with mandalas and dream catchers. Um, at the time, I was thinking that I wanted to draw perfectly things, very really? well. Yes, oh. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> and I even remember to ask to my partner, which is a, a drawing teacher and a painter, I, I asked him to, to teach me how to draw perfectly flowers and he, he is so supportive to me and he says you don't need to 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 draw them perfectly you need to draw as you want and you as you see them right and so I started with dream catchers and mandalas and I evolved Mm -hmm. I was always starting, I was always wanted to, okay, I'm going to see flowers the way I want. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to put art the way my brain goes. Because at the beginning, I thought that I would be, I, I must be a fine art people. I don't know. Right. Much I more, that I have. Yeah, much more like perfect real, things real very perfect, organized right. in my but brain don't that, though the science side of your brain that I biology so. I feel like it is for me with the you know the techie part of it it's just like but I don't want that in my art like I want it to be that's like the place where you just let go and but that was a discover yes. because yeah. at the beginning I thought that I was, I want, I must be very perfect and well drawing things. And mm -hmm. I don't know. So uh, I, uh, it, it happened mm -hmm. like, a, uh, as a result of an exploration, I think the, of keep going and practicing and start seeing things that I really love to put on paper and start to, uh, I don't know, expressing my inner me. I think it was that, uh, that I started to see, okay, I don't need to draw things perfect. I don't need to, to know how to draw faces and other things that I see others doing. I just want, I just need to express myself. Right. And that, at that time, my heart, my art started to change. And I, but I think it's, it will continue changing. Oh, I yeah, feel no, that. I think it does for everybody. Sure. I think it's that idea of, I don't know, at least for me, not quite being satisfied where I'm at. Like I want to push myself to learn more and do better and see what else I can create. Explore. So, yes, exactly. We I are always say, wow. I know when I look back at my early days, I think, whoa, like I used brown and black and it was very vintage. And now it's like, I love color and I want all of that. It's just, you really see that, that progression and you're just, it's exciting. You know, it's, yeah, it's a, a lot like your garden where you're getting it prepped and you're getting it ready. And then the, your, your plants start to come up and then they start blooming and then they're vibrant. And then they kind of have that next transition, you know? So it's like, and then the next season more, you know, so I could see and each season is different. Yeah. For most more years that I sow and garden, uh -huh. every season is different. And there are things that I grow this year and the next year I can grow them. Uh, and I don't know why they are not growing so well. Right. Or are the things that the last year didn't grow so well are going to grow this year? And it's very unexpected. Uh, right. There's a part of um, mm -hmm. unexpected and surprise. And, well, yes. and that probably adds to why you enjoy that so much as well, because it's a lot like your creative process. You know, it's just, you, you don't, you can't force it. You can't yes. be like, I'm just going to look like this. I'm going to draw it like this. And this is how it's going to be. Cause 
it just doesn't work that way. It's, it's like, like it. I say, I wanted my art to look exactly like so and so's. Well, it's not because you're not that person. And completely, you yeah. Make it happen, yes. So, yes. So, yeah. But I love yes. that how you've come from doing something so very different into you know what you do now, which is just that's amazing to me. So let's talk about the the real struggle of technology because we touched we touched on that a little bit and really you know how that struggle affected you building that you, you got your art, you know what you want to do, but then you've got that. Okay. Now what do I do? Like, yes, it I've was, never, it was and many, many artists and creatives are in the same boat where they just, I reached to that point. I yeah. wanted uh, to put my art in a different level. I wanted to right. put it out there. I wanted, because I love to teach and uh, share, mm-hmm. I really love to share um, my explorations, the way that I, create things and explore and I wanted to put them uh, to put my art and my my knowledge out there but I didn't know how to do it I I remember oh my god I saw (laughs) other artists putting things out there digital courses digital papers Mm -hmm. and I thought to myself oh my god where I'm going to learn this where those does these people learn this because here in Portugal norm uh, art journaling is known mm-hmm. so marketing or uh, marketing online is a way far <laughs> from uh, to be known here um, the way I see uh, in other countries so I was on the point that I wanted to go to another level and I didn't know how to do it Right. Yeah. And that can be frustrating, you know, because you're like, I, you have that desire, you've got the skill, you really want to share and you very much, you're a teacher, you're a natural, you know, you teach <laughs> right now. Anyway, you've been doing that for 20 years. So it's like, that is a natural transition that you were ready for, but it's like, okay, now what do I do? Like, how do I get to that point? So, so what do you think is the, what, what is the, I guess the biggest benefit that you've experienced as being a member of Makers Tech U for oh, that complete transition. <laughs> I know we've talked about this, so I know it's a lot, but yeah. It's, it completely changed yeah. everything completely. It's uh, It was because I was in that point that I wanted to, and I reached to you and I wanted to pivot and to put in everything in another level. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know, know the path and what, where to start, mm-hmm. which platforms would I would use. Mm-hmm. And so with Make a Check with Tech U, the most important first thing was that when I enroll, I have the path. I have the steps for me. Right. Because it's so much things to learn. And I'm easy to learn and I love to learn, but there is so many things to, to, to tackle in the first place that it can be very overwhelming. And I, so I, I think that most of the times people give up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so, easy to do that. Yeah. 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 Because if we're trying to figure it out alone, right. It's really frustrating. So having a path to start here and go. Mm-hmm. do these and these and you explain everything so well one thing you put in in little videos and we <laughs> we see um item by item and we go along right. and, did, and we do yeah. the yeah. the good thing yeah. I, and, is that i do and i and i i i, I can do you know right. i see the results yeah. and oh my god what i reach uh, <laughs> till today yeah it it has been an amazing journey since I, and i know that i i never would do this alone without being in maker statue yeah you, i created my website oh I was uh, gonna say, your website is amazing like i'm i'm just it's almost like i i feel like in a way i'm like that mama bird i guess and she's helping her little babies get ready and then they it's like go it's time for you to leave now and, then and i remember when, yeah and i remember when you were working on your website and you were kind of you know i you know i can you look at this how's this going or whatever and i mean you you truly 
you grasped it. Like you, your website is beautiful and it reflects Mm -hmm. you and what you do and your art and your personality. And it's a beautiful website. In fact, I was on it just the other day and I was kind of going, what did she change? Is there any like things I change it? And it looks like during the winter, I didn't have any time for nothing. And so when spring comes and I, I, again, going to start it again, uh, right. looking at things and I want to go this further again. Yes. I look at the other site and my website and oh, I need to change because uh, some months later, right. we see things that uh, uh, other things and again, right. our art evolved a little That's bit. Right. That's right. And so, um, yes, I changed and uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks at the end and being on maker secure. It's so important because I I forgot some things. Mm, mm-hmm. I did the first time the site. And then when I want to tweak some things, yep. oh my gosh, I don't remember this. And I go again and everything is there right. very well des- described. So it's very easy to go and to fix again. Yeah. And yeah you, you are always it. there helping. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, I love it. I, I love being available and helping and seeing artists grow from that. I want to do this, but I don't know how to get there. You know, and I also know that you have grown your community, you've grown your email list. And so you, you had a lot of goals when you started and we talked and it was just like, wow, but I could see really how overwhelming that could be. It's like, I want to do all of these things but you can't just jump in at one point and go, okay, I'm going to try that. And then I'll try that. I'll try that. It's just, you really have oh. to start from the beginning. So, so let's talk about what changes you want to make in your creative journey. We'll say the next six months, maybe to a year. I kind of already know, but I want you to kind of share that a little bit. Cause I know we've talked about that too. And my big, big, big gro- goal <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is to be able to teach only uh, for my art community right. and let go of the biology job as mm-hmm. a teacher because uh, it's it's it will reach uh, to a point that it's not I'm not able to do both and right. um, it's reaching right now because uh, it's so there are two jobs almost like full time <laughs> it, it really is I mean and and uh, one is from one part of my brain and the others, the other is from the other part of my brain. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I go to school, it's, it's another thing. And I, when I come home and be in my art studio, in my art things, it's another thing. So I need to, to put, it was 20 years. I feel that right. it's, a, it's reached to a cycle and I would love to let go that job and dedicated only to this art community which is i think it is my sole job yeah <laughs> no, i think that's that's and that's a great goal and now w- do you see yourself uh obviously teaching online or in person do you see you know what 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 are your huge goals like what would be your big goal that you'd have my yeah um i want to continue i want i have so many um, courses and things that I want to share here in right. my brain that I want to create and continue creating my art classes. But I would love to, this is a, a big goal, a big goal, but yeah. I want to receive people. I would love to receive here in Portugal people from my art community. It is a board from Portugal because here we don't have uh, an art journaling community. Uh, Mm-hmm. I think that I can count from my two hands the people <laughs> that I know that are journaling, <laughs> that are journaling to mix media the way we do. Okay, right. Um, a part of the fine art artists. Sure. So um, I would love to create art retreats here in Portugal to receive some of that people that I would love to know in person. Right. So that would be a. A big one go. Yeah, I can see that, you know, coming and being a part of really what you have to offer. Obviously, let's come in the spring when the flowers are blooming, and then we learn about these flowers and these things you have in your garden, and then we, you know, harvest what we need, and then we work and make papers and we whatever, and then we also use some of those in our 
in the in the kitchen to cook and incorporate yeah, the that. Food, the food, the entire experience. It would, it would be a, here in Portugal is a beautiful country. It's a beautiful country. Of course, we have would to select some parts of Portugal, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, there are so much to eat. We eat so well. We have amazing food, uh, amazing place to be to create art. Um, Gar botanical gardens beautiful so yes i think it's a it would be an amazing experience so i will reach there there you go you got to have the bigger you got to have those big dreams i mean who would have thought that back when you started doing mandalas and and the dream catchers that you would be where you are now i mean that yeah. that at that time was a big dream so you got you're there now so now <laughs> where do we go from here so it's yeah. amazing i i had that time it was it was really a dream, but now with all the the, the knowledge that I was uh, I I could have from you and from Manchesteku and the things that I've been implementing, I I know now that it's possible. Right, it, and it is. Of course, it needs work and it's a uh, constant learning and put things in practice. It's a lot of work, but I think it's it's so worth it because it's uh, a soul dream. Yeah. And you're doing something that you love and you're incorporating other elements that you love into that. Now we've kind of already talked a little bit about it, but I was wanting to see separate from your art, things that you enjoy. And we talked about gardening, but is there anything else that's not related to that. That's, I mean, you're a mom too. So anything that's not related to that, that you, we would find you maybe doing second to creating. Gardening would be yeah, flowers and gardening. I think it's a, the two places that I really, really love yeah. to be it's my yeah. art table and in the garden, but, um, I mean, do you like to read? Do you I love to read? I, I love to read okay. uh, knowledge books. I don't like to, to read. No <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I, I love to read the um, self-development books oh, okay. and not so well novels uh, and okay. uh, things like that. I don't like to read, but I love to read self-development books and um, I love to walk uh, yeah. in nature or on the beach or at the beach or the forest. Yeah. I love to be um, with my family and make some long walks mm -hmm. and grab some nature things and come bring home. Uh, I really love to to be and to to go to flea markets, <laughs> see oh. old things. Oh yeah, of course, that's a definite fun thing to do. Yeah. Now, tell me, I know you were on holiday in, in uh, last month. Um, yes. Did you go? Did you go to the seaside or where? Where did you? Yes, go? I went to Algarve. Uh, so okay. Portugal is like a, that rectangle okay. Penis, uh -huh. okay, yeah. near Spain. And so I live in the center and we went to the south mm -hmm. where it's much more sunny. It's like on the top of Africa. So uh, yeah. yeah. So we have the Atlantic and then the Mediterranean uh -huh. goes and bleeds with Atlantic. So it, the, we have warmer waters mm. than the coast Atlantic. And it was so sunny, so good, so good. And all right. <laughs> those those times bring so much energy and inspiration for the rest of the, the year and the winter times. Right. It's really so yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I was curious because I knew that you were going somewhere and I was like, I wonder, because I know I have friends in other places too. And a lot of them want to go to the ocean. They want to go to the seaside. They call it the seaside. We call it the beach or the ocean, but, but yeah. So and we have lots of, we have two coasts of Portugal. Yeah. Full of, uh, yeah. It's full of ocean. So we, yeah. we have lots of beautiful beaches and um, very different from each other's. Oh, so yeah, uh, it's really beautiful. Yeah. Even in Florida, your beaches are different depending on where you go. Not, not dramatically, not like you might not have, well, down in the keys, there's mostly rock. You don't have a lot of sandy beaches, but even from the Atlantic side to the Gulf side of Florida, the sand is different. The water is different. Like on the Atlantic side, you have waves 
on the cold Gulf side, it's very calm. Very calm, cool. My favorite. I love just to get on a float and just, you know, float. So, but that is very rejuvenating to me to be at the ocean and then just kind of, okay, I'm ready now. You know, it's sort yeah, of that re- rejuvenating. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So as we close, tell us about some things you've got going on. I know you've got something going on because I got an email about it today. So tell us about that. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to be a guest teacher in Lifebook 2022. Mm-hmm. So uh, there is uh, now open registration for the taster session and it's uh, lots of free lessons. So it's really cool. And I'm recording my next class, which yeah. I want to launch uh, very soon. Mm-hmm. And so but at the same time, school is almost starting. So, okay. <laughs> Got to pace yourself. Got to pace yourself. So yes. well, we'll put your social links um, in the blog post and Thank you. notes, but also just because it's easy. Tell us where we can find you on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? My Instagram is Francisca Nunes underscore heart makes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And we'll link to your website and all your socials. Um, inside the notes of the on the blog post so thank you so much for joining thank me thank you today. so much also, for having me and all the support yeah I would love and the, to all the work here. you have been done yeah, for us all yeah I it's it's yeah I'm really really enjoyed I've enjoyed getting to know you and seeing you grow from when you first had the ideas and I want to do these things to where you are now so and I really enjoyed hearing about your garden and the plants and the flowers. And if anyone has questions, I know that you would be willing to um, answer. So just send her a DM and I'm sure she'll share. Yeah, also, we'll put the link to your, the gardening um, account. Uh, my can- gardening. What's, uh, it, what's it called? Uh, Art makes in the garden, I think. Oh, I love oh. that. I don't even know the name. Of- I love <laughs> it. Very- yeah. Because I am Francisca Nunes. Uh, Heart makes... Right. And, and I, yeah. art makes in the garden, something like that, but I will. Yeah. We'll put it in the notes. Com- yeah. I love that name though. I, I think that's, uh, I could uh, see yeah. a vision of a book down the road, maybe of, you know, who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> Big dreams, right? Big dreams. Big yeah. dreams. It would be very, very interesting. Yeah. Full of color from the garden. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for joining. Thank me. you for having me, Robin. And it's pleasure. a pleasure. Mm-hmm. All right. And have honor. Oh, thank, thank you so you much. much. You're so sweet. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for listening and tuning in. Bye. Bye. Are you ready to turn overwhelm into something manageable? Listen, I know you have a dream for your creative business, but you know, it takes learning technology to make that happen. So stop wasting piecing it all together with YouTube videos that end up confusing you even more. Let me help you make learning and mastering the tech easy and fun so you can spend more time focused on your art passion. Take a look at Makers Tech U. Investing in yourself is the best investment you can ever make. So check it out at makerstechu.com forward slash join. And I hope to see you on the inside.